Hi everybody, Joe here. When we're looking at the head, one of the things that we always want to consider is the shape of our model. Right, when I'm looking at this student drawing, uh, I really wanted to go through and correct some of the silhouette shape concepts. When you look at the model's head, here we have Aurora. The tilt on the head is a lot higher, so I wanted to give her a little bit more mass. The direction of the eyes need to be facing in the direction of the nose and the mouth because of that perspective that we always want to keep in mind when we're talking about the head. I wanted to frame the hair first because her hair is a really important dominant shape and it helps to kind of lay out the planes of the forehead, the jawline, around the cheekbone, and the zygomatic bone. And then I can kind of worry about laying in the features after that is all done. I'm always going back and checking where things are in space, comparing sizes to one another. You can see I'm making marks on the, for on the portrait. And then I want to go back in and adjust those really, really important details as I begin to kind of think about how to construct my values. Uh, we've talked about this a number of times, but I always want to draw the movement that is happening on any certain form in the direction of the value of the form. Uh, so you can see that the hair planes are actually moving up and down around the hair, so it helps to establish a volumetric relationship to the hair. The shapes of the hairs uh, shapes the hair shape uh, I'm going to bring down and really accentuate to define her silhouette shape on the edge of her face. Then I'm paying a lot of attention to how those shapes begin to kind of formulate and create those shadows across the edge of her plane, into her nose, around the orbit of your eyes, and up over into the forehead. Remember, if those shapes are not really dominant, uh, like in the eyes, right, I'm seeing a whole bunch of values, but really if I squint my eyes, I'm just seeing one massive value. I just want to take all those shapes and group them together into one big value mass. That way I'm getting a really quick and simple way to identify her and make sure that I get her silhouette shapes correct. I'm going to throw everything down, lay it into one value, and then kind of use that to adjust uh, my perspective and make sure that it feels like the model that I'm looking at. All right, Here we have Mike. I'm going to do the same thing. I just want to make sure that my neck and my head are connected via at least a simple gesture line going into a really simple planimetric laying of the head. I'm going to break down some of the marks that I choose to use. Anytime I'm drawing the head, I am of the habit of always, always, always laying in the neck and the shoulders. You want to know how the parts of the human body always connect. Drawing through the center line, coming across, laying in the planes for my features, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then going back in and laying in those big shapes. I like to start with the hair. You can see his hair is already basically laid in. So then I'm going to go in with the orbit of the eyes, throw in that keystone between the eyes so I have a sense of placement. Getting a volume-based shape for the nose, which is that three-plane triangle shape that we talked about. And then breaking down some of his larger masses, which include the beard, the ears, and then the pupils where they're going to go. Not the pupils, the eyes. Once I have those really large masses in place, then I can go in and I can start breaking my shapes into smaller shapes. We always talked about this theory, I'm going to mention it again, you always want to draw from big to small. You don't want to get into too much detail too early in a drawing because then you get obsessed with a certain area. And that's when the proportions really begin to go out of whack when things get kind of lost. I'm going to throw in just a really simple value just to kind of lay in my ideation process. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to mop, mock out really, really, really specific shapes related to my model. And follow his nose, follow his eyes, really think and consider what he specifically looks like. So I'm taking all that planimetric knowledge, right, thinking about things in terms of relationships, and I'm beginning to adjust them according to the specificity of my model. That way I'll get really, I'm going to start improving the way I articulate how a head specifically looks, if I can get into this habit, right, starting from general, going into specific, starting with big shapes, going into smaller shapes. You always want to kind of keep that in mind. So of those big shapes, the orbits of the eyes, right, the jawline, the hair, those are those really dominant shapes that are going to really define how a person looks like. Those are the shapes I really want to begin to think about as I'm breaking down the relationships in my drawing. You can kind of see at this stage that I'm making some adjustments. His cheek is a little bit wider. The orbit of his eye comes out a little bit more in that perspective view. And then if I see any sort of major hair shape, 
changes, I'll kind of delineate them here. All right, once I've got that down, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to think about shadows. Right? So I first thought about construction. Secondly, I'm thinking about anatomical landmarks. Now I'm going to take all that knowledge and build it into his specific shadow shapes. And this is when you really take a figure and you begin to adapt an understanding of how his anatomy or her anatomy begin to construct the shapes that are important to their silhouette, their design. That's how identity really becomes an important part of the drawing practice. Once again, I'm thinking about direction of light and how it's whole, uh, touching on the forms. You'll notice that I'm thinking about how the light is emanating across the curls. So I'm designing those curls to kind of follow those shapes. Refining anything that might be a little bit out of proportion, like his cheek right there and the hair shape. And I'm going to lay in that single value, double check my identity, make sure it kind of looks like my model, and then I'm good to go. Alright, I hope this video helps you guys.